So I am live. Okay, so tonight we are diving back into the arrow well because because I got a lot. <laughs> I have a lot of arrows. If you've watched over the last couple days, and thank you if you have, by the way, um, I really uh, I really do appreciate that. Um, last night, well, last night I did my limited edition arrow sets. I included some like the arrow DVD box sets as well, some of the early arrow drum stuff. Um, the night before that, or the night before that, anyway, the, the video before that, I uh, did arrow box sets. So what I'm trying to do is, because I do have a significant arrow collection, is to break it up so it's not too overwhelming when I do part of my collection. So tonight, what we're going to do is, we're going to, and this was inspired a bit by uh, by, by Michelle, by Hey Tummy Films, and a little bit, a bit, a little bit by Michelle, a little bit by Vinny. A little bit by Steph and a little bit by Brian. Hey, Jason, how's it going? <clears throat> um, we're going to go into the Italian stuff. So I'm not going to retread like the box sets or limited editions that I've already done because I did that in the last two videos because I definitely have enough Italian releases on their own. It was the Italian films, the uh, the Jallos and the uh, Spaghetti Westerns that got me into uh, collecting Arrow. One thing that got me into collecting Arrow in the first place, if you watched last night's video, then you know that... Uh, my first Arrow release was actually uh, the Lucio Fulci box set, like the video video drone box set that they did for the uh, Gates of Hell tr trilogy. And uh, still really proud to have that one. So behind me is a bunch of Blu-rays and even some DVDs. Uh, so you're going to get to see some of the early Arrow stuff as well. And uh, that's going to be kind of neat because I've even got a DVD window box, which uh, you don't see much of anymore. But they did do them. They did like window boxes for the DVDs as well, not just, not just the Blu-rays. And we'll, uh, we'll dive in a bit because uh, thanks to some fortuitous luck uh, earlier on today, uh, thanks to my better half, I was able to procure more Arrow videos that are on their way right now. Uh, and kind of to, to save some money and to see, kind of to get the, the just the difference of it, I ordered one order. I did two orders, like two small orders. Uh, one order I did I was, uh, was with the track shipping the big you know the really fast cool shipping uh the other order that i placed was placed for regular shipping so we'll see uh how you know what the length of time is how they compare and uh packaging stuff like that so i will be doing that video down the road as well um i kind of thought uh i'd risk my, my myself and my dvds on there so uh hopefully everything comes out okay so without further ado because you guys are so quiet tonight uh what i'll do is i'll go into uh, into this and oh before I do there's one thing that I would like to do and uh, there I was actually talking to a really nice guy named George today on on Facebook and he lives in Scotland he's probably not on here live uh, but for when you watch this video George hey there thanks you your comment actually helped make my day this morning when I when I uh, when I got up, so thank you for that. <clears throat> so we'll start with the uh, with the DVD stuff first, and we'll go into the Blu-rays. Uh, I kind of wanted I was originally going to start with the uh, with the Blu-rays first, and go into the DVDs because some of the DVDs are probably lesser. I'm not sure if they're lesser available right now, or you just don't see them around as much. So uh, for people that come in early and leave early, this is going to be a fun time for you because uh, uh, we're going to get into that and. Argento being the person that I started collecting on Arrow. Uh, see, I'm from the VHS, well, the pre-VHS days, before there was VHS, when dinosaurs were on the earth. Um, anyway, so Argento was one of those guys that I used to, uh, I used to want to watch, used to collect. When Anchor Bay started putting out their Argento releases, I was like super stoked. Other ones, I mean, I had to get them from bootleg copies. Hey, Docs, how's it going? Uh, uh, I'm doing the... Uh, the Arrow Video Italian collection today, so I'm going to be going through their Italian releases. Um, so I would get like bootleg stuff and that. Hey, Ken. <laughs> I actually, that's what where a lot of us are hoping for that that four fly set, a nice big box set like they did with Phenomenon and stuff. Oh, I really want Phenomenon so bad, but it's not available anymore. It is sold out. One of these days I'll find it. So first off is, and these are in no particular order by the way, is the two disc edition that they originally did of Tear at the Opera. I know a lot of us would love to see some uh, 
Now I know there's a Blu-ray of this one, but we'd love to see an Arrow Blu-ray of this one. Uh, I think maybe Scorpion or Code Red or somebody put this out. Uh, I, I, want a, I want an Arrow edition of this uh, with a really nice box set. So these are one of the early ones. So it does have the, the two discs and it has the uh, both versions of the, uh, of the film on here. And of course, because it's an early Arrow release, you would get the, the early looking box sets. You know, but like booklets, oh, box sets. Got it in my mind today. I'll even tell you guys what I got. I won't like leave it as a secret. Uh, and I do wanna, I will show you this one guys because it is a really nice one. Um, you would get the Arrow poster, which pretty much came standard with most of their, uh, their DVDs back then. So if you ever like find like an unopened Arrow, <clears throat> like DVD, like especially one of the early ones, then nine tenths out of ten, you're gonna get a sweet poster out of it as well, and uh, and that's always that's always kind of cool. They were done in these white cases. It was kind of that was Arrow's kind of go-to. So they were doing like the white thing before other uh, other companies were well, other companies do kind of clear. And they do have the original artwork on the back right here. So you could slide that out. You can put in whichever artwork you wanted to. I of course use the. Uh, I like this new artwork. I really really do. I'm kind of one of these days. I'm hoping, like, if I go to Ontario sometime, it'll it'll end up there because I go to Bay Street. I'm not sure if you were here, Ken, when I went to Bay Street video uh, up in Ontario. I did like a big video about it, but they had a lot of amazing stuff. Like, I went there and was able to buy like Blind Date from Scorpion on opening day. So uh, when you know the day it came out, Tear the Opera is a fantastic like Argento film, highly underrated actually. Uh, so there was some really great effects work by Sergio Stavaletti, who would go on to direct The Wax Mask. A movie that was supposed to have been directed by Mario Bava, but unfortunately he he passed on. Uh, this is a this is a really fun one. I uh, I like the cast in this one a lot. This one is uh, you know Dario Nicolodi returns to act in this one, and uh, for a while you, some people thought she wasn't going to come back. <clears throat> Next up is one of my lesser, uh, not one of my favorite Argento ones. Um, but I know what he was going with when he made this one, but it's one of my favorite covers. I'm not going to lie there. And, uh, that is, uh, this got to be by Rick Melton. So this cover here is definitely by Rick Melton. When you're looking at an early Arrow release, uh, and you, uh, see a voluptuous girl on the cover and you look towards the artwork, nine chances out of 10, that, that was an artist, that's an artist by the name of Rick Melton who they used for a lot of their work early on. Um, anytime you see like, this anytime when there's a sexy girl on the cover that's usually Rick, nine chance of ten is Rick Milton and I really love his artwork so this is the card player not one of my favorite Argentals it's actually a, a little bit slower and it drags a bit um, it plays like a CSI episode sort of like a weird CSI episode uh, that is on purpose though uh, Argento was a fan of the show CSI <laughs> it does have great cover Vinny. Um, and he wanted to uh to make like, kind of like a CSI episode type of type of film. And that's what Card Player was meant to be. It was meant to be like his, like Argento CSI basically. So if you ever saw a CSI series done by Argento, this is what it will be like. Again, as you know, this one has like a little uh, booklet in here from like the early Arrow releases, like Arrow film booklet. It has the, uh, exactly, a lot like the old Vargas drawings. That's a really good, I never really thought of it that way before, but uh, that makes a lot of sense. And since it is a Rick Mountain one, I, I will definitely... Uh, I did see the list. Honestly, Trilogy of Terror is my favorite, like for uh, two out of that list. Why do... See, one of these days I'm going to have a, you know, I'm going to have some a place where I'm going to have these like framed or something like that. And then my, my spouse is going to come down and, and take them and take them down. Uh, it's different. Uh, I like Trilogy of One, uh, Terror One, right? Uh, but I, I like the second one. It's fun. However, I, I'm older. My better half is like 10 years younger than I am. And so I showed Trilogy of Terror 2. I, actually, I showed both Trilogy of Terrors in a row to uh, both my better half and my oldest at the same time. So we were, all, we're at 
at the old apartment in St. John's. And uh, we sat down. They were bored, primarily throughout Trilogy of Terror. I'm not going to lie to you. They were pretty bored. Uh, they thought the Zuni doll episode was, was kind of fun and kind of cute. But for the first two, there were a few trips to the washroom and a few trips to the kitchen. I, I, I will be completely honest. However, uh, Trilogy of Terror 2 grabbed them. It grabbed them right away. Uh, they did like they liked Lizard Anthony uh, taking over in the like you know doing the three stories. They really liked the rat story uh, that kind of creeped them out. They thought Trilogy of Terror 2 was scarier than the original Trilogy of Terror. And uh, looking at it through fresh eyes, in a way, I, I guess it kind of is. So uh, I do love them both, and they both work, but a lot of Trilogy of Terror, the original, works more if you're around that time. If you got that like that nostalgic feel, that like warm fuzzies when you're watching the film, um, you remember. You remember what it's like to be scared. You remember what it's like, like like when you watch Sam's Lot, the miniseries, when you're a kid and you're like like looking out through behind like the the sofa. That's that's just me, right? Um, yeah. Anyway, Trilogy of Terror two, I recommend it. All right, this one, uh, if you look really close, uh, there was a a a, 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 a power a big power road, which lasts for days. In, uh, in Newfoundland and all we had to watch we had this computer so me and my better half would be like snuggled under the blankets uh, <clears throat> ups, upstairs give another chance Ken trust me <laughs> they actually like Night Stalker and Night Strangler like they were like really into that one uh, but I yeah but I'm not sure they would like this series hopefully they would uh, so we had a bunch of like arrow movies like our gentle films uh, like we watched, I think it was Bird Crystal Pilgrimage we watched first, but we had Stendhal Syndrome, like down there's one of the ones we might watch. So, because it's a pretty disturbing film. Uh, <laughs> which one's Night Killer? Uh, the, uh, the cats actually decided this, that this case would make like a good play tie. So, there's actually some like claw marks. On this case, and I found out later on. I was so peeved, but they're so cute. I couldn't. Uh, I could not stay mad. I gotta check that out. This is a, this is Stendhal syndrome. Hey, Adrian, welcome, dude. This again. This has got to be another Milton cover. Uh, this there. That's a really good like. I think it's a really good drawing of Azia Argento, uh, who I'm a huge fan of, by the way. Uh, she's does a fantastic job in this one. This is a really. It's it's cool. It's artsy, but it's not artsy in like kind of like a, you know, kind of like a pretentious or boring. It's really, really good. Uh, there's a really good edition of it. Uh, does by uh, put out by Blue Underground, I think. Uh, my friend of mine, James, actually sent that to me uh, recently, and uh, I got to dive into it because uh, it's a really nice kind of like a three disc edition type of thing. Uh, now this is the original Arrow one because this for the longest time there was this one and there was like a trauma release which you don't want. Uh, it they just it was very trauma esque. It just wasn't that great. Um, again, I won't take like the mall out or anything like that. But uh, again, this has a poster. I will show the alternate artwork as well because uh, I do have a lot to get through here, and I do like this art. But uh, I you know as always, I'm a big Milton fan. I like Rick Milton stuff, so uh, I do like the the lovely luxurious ladies that he draws. The Vargas inspired. Steindahl, not for everybody, but it's a really good film. It's a bit dark and uh, it does get a little like super violent, a little bit rapey. So, you know, those are just the warnings out there before you go out and like go and grab that film. Next up is the only DVD slip box that I got. Uh, I got so many editions of this film, it's, it's insane. Uh, because it's one of my favorite like Italian Jello films of all time. <laughs> yeah, you'll definitely like it. Uh, and that is Dario Argento's Tenebrae. Now, what's really cool about this and why I actually got this DVD slip box is when this came out, there was a Blu-ray put out of this as well. But it became pretty apparent, like pretty quickly, that the DVD actually, for some reason, surpassed the Blu-ray. <laughs> all right? Uh, then that was like a, that was a big thing. Like it actually, because uh, I went looking for it and they said, you know, if you're going to get this movie, get the DVD, don't get the Blu-ray. And uh, 
this is the only time I ever got like got one. I ordered it and I got it and it was like a slip box. Uh, this is actually a really cool one, so I will show you like that. You can see the other covers right there. And it's a really cool, again, sexy release with the with the original like booklet. I like these old kind of old school booklets that they used to do. Uh, whenever I can, like I try to find the older Arrow releases when I can get them. And uh, this, you know, this is another art cover on the other side right there. But I do like the slip box, you know, these window boxes. And I wish that uh, they would do some more of these in the future. Kind of maybe like for an ant, like it's their 10th anniversary. I, I kind of thought that uh, for their 10th anniversary, they might like put out a win an old school window box release. I was kind of expecting it, to be honest with you. I, I, I never mentioned it on video, but um, I was kind of surprised they didn't kind of harken back. Uh, but they did put that little booklet in there, that 10th anniversary booklet, which is actually really cool. I got to read through that. I looked at, kind of glanced at it the other day, but I haven't read it through yet. Oh, there's more Argento to come, guys. Uh, next up is one that's actually being re-released by uh, Blue Underground in a uh, lenticular cover uh, in the very near future. And that is the original Arrow release of Two Evil Eyes. Oh, the Batman. <laughs> um, this is actually a pretty cool one. It's like it deals with... Well, Edgar Allan Poe stories. And uh, one's done by Argento. One's done by George Romero. And uh, I, uh, I really dig this. So we got the black cat and the facts in the case of Mr. Valdemar. And uh, Valdemar is done by Romero. And the black cat is done by Argento. Again, I really dig this release. I'm trying to see if this, like... This is one of the early ones where I found, like, uh, those postcards. I love these here, like, arrow postcards that they do to kind of let you know what's coming out. That's what Arrow used to do for a long time. Um, you wouldn't find out. You'd find out eventually through, uh, through basically through Facebook or through. At the time, they were with a uh, a forum site by the name of Cult Cult Labs. Uh, Cult Labs is still around, and but Arrow used to be like strongly like with Cult Labs, and they uh, decided they were going to go on their own and do like their own thing on Facebook, and they kind of disassociated themselves with the forum site for uh, reasons reasons unknown actually. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, come back. There are lots more, <laughs> lots more of these to show you. I'm excited to see you, you unbox your stuff, by the way. Vinny's got some good stuff. I can't tell you what it is, but Vinny's got some good stuff coming. So make sure you check out that video. And what's really neat is on the back, they always have like a, a bunch of their like early releases. So you can see there's that creepy dummy that freaked me out from, uh, from, from Deep Red. So I... Uh, and the beautiful cover for Bird with Crystal Plumage on there. Hey, B-Movie Archives. We are going through Arrow tonight because I bought some Arrow stuff. I actually ordered some stuff. And I, at the end of this here, I will actually tell you guys. I, I could wait and surprise you guys, but a lot of you guys are on my Twitter anyway. So I'll let you guys know what I, what I ordered. And I'll let you know the reasoning behind everything I ordered. All right. Next up is, I know you're going to be shocked. It's another Argento film. And uh, <clears throat> this is what some people would be considered his last really good film, his last, and his last like kind of decent jello that he made, and uh, that would be Sleepless. I'm actually a big fan of this film. I mean, it doesn't. Some of the acting, some of the actors in it aren't exactly the best, but then again, some of them are Max von Sydow. So yeah, there's some good acting in this film. Um, is that a perfect original film? No, but is it way better than things like Dracula 3D? Why yes, why yes it is. Again, this is an, an early one. This is something that they kind of like tied with doing at the time. And you, if you look here like really closely, you're going to see there's a kind of a sub-label where it says Masters of Jallo uh, written there. So this, unfortunately, wouldn't follow through on their later releases. Oh, I hate when this goes black. Uh, wouldn't follow through on their later releases, but... I was hoping there'd be more of these. Yeah, actually, I just uh, heard of... Candace said the, that the Scorpion release for Opera is great. And that deserves a good release. Actually, Opera is the first one I showed on here. The old, like the old school Arrow Opera. But if you haven't checked this out, guys, check it out. It's like Sleepless is a really fun little film. Okay, next up are two that aren't done by uh, Argento. They're actually done, they are done by the same director, though. And, and that director is, I gotta get this right, Massimo 
Delamano. And the first one up is the Night Child. I bought these in, uh, oh, I think I bought these in London. With the later Argento. Uh, I mean, you're pretty solid going through all the way up to Sleepless. Sleepless is, you know, as, as some weaker parts, but you know, a lot of giallos really do. I don't think it's so much that Sleepless is weaker as the fact that all those giallo tropes had been done like so many times. Uh, that uh, you get to the point that like a sleepless comes out or even an opera comes out and people have seen so much of the stuff and so many have been like uh, you know have been copied and recycled and stuff like that that uh, I don't think it's so much that Jallo's got got weaker as like it's the same with slashers as uh, people just got a little bit tired of them uh, for a while I think that uh, now like people going in and watching them now uh, couldn't find new favorites in movies that weren't considered classics before uh, because um, because they're going with fresh eyes. Maybe you're somebody that like wasn't around during the Jallo time uh, goes in and they watch something like uh, like like Sleepless or uh, or maybe you know maybe even Card Play. I don't know. Um, and they find this like that's one of their favorites. Like something hits it with them. And much in the way that Tenebrae works with me. Uh, I think I like Tenebrae so much because it's just such a it, the actors acting is so well. I love the ending. It's got a great ending. And I do like the fact that Tenebrae is like five seconds in the future. Um, and if and he doesn't state it or he doesn't like put it out there or he doesn't like really like kind of like there's no nobody puts on a space suit or anything like that but he, he shoots everything and everything is so clean and uh, and white and uh, and sterile um, that uh, it's like Argento is like kind of like glimpse like into five seconds into the future basically with uh, with Tenebrae and he doesn't have to go out and make do any like extra sciencey thing to do that. It, it it just works based on the art design alone. So uh, yeah, Night Child is actually a. I thought this was a pretty fun one. City on fire. Actually, I think I have actually a long time ago though, man. And speaking of Arjuna, by the way, that's the thing. You might find a movie that some people say have have dismissed. But because you're seeing it through different eyes from a different time period, it might hit you uh, like more than uh, than with somebody else. Somebody at the time, oh, I've seen them all. I'm going through this one again. Like you get a lot of people that watch like a lot of this, like my era, like watch a lot of the slasher films. So by the time like the late '80s came, they're like, oh no, not another slasher film. Um, and uh, but you know, when you go back and watch some of these, even like some like the '90s slasher films, get dismissed. Uh, Urban Legends, a fantastic little slasher film, but because it came out later on and it wasn't in the golden age of the 1980 to 1984 slasher period, it doesn't get the respect that it would, that it would normally would deserve if it came out at a different period. Uh, I do like the the booklet. Oh, Miss 45 is a fantastic release. I got the, uh, I think it's, was it Draft House that put that one out? Because that's the release I got. So, the next title stars uh, a very lovely... Um, Oh God, Stephanie Beecham, and I'm going to uh, call this movie "Blue Movie Blackmail" because that is actually a better title than what's listed right here. Just just saying that. Though, if you're a fan of Stephanie Beecham and you're thinking, "I want to see Stephanie Beecham disrobed for quite a bit," uh, this this, my friends, is a movie for you. So the next three here are by uh, an Italian filmmaker by the name of Tinto Brass. And Tinto Brass was like an, art an artsy, kind of artistic filmmaker. He liked a lot of the erotica style stuff. But um, then Bob Guccione came along from, uh, from Penthouse. And he said, I, I want to make an epic. I want to make an epic film. And I want you, Tinto Brass, because you, you've, you've got like a bit of clout behind you. I want you to be the director for my first film. And that movie was called Caligula. Uh, unfortunately, that movie didn't do that well. And it was a little bit, notor there's a little bit of notoriety behind the film. And it hurt Tinto Brass's career. Uh, his later stuff, some of it comes off a lot, a little bit of like the, have you ever seen like the Skinamax, like Emmanuel, Emmanuel in Space, that type of stuff? Some of his later, later stuff comes off. Uh, I know, you're lucky. I haven't shown the Blu-rays yet. I'm doing the Blu-rays like after this, so you came in good this time. Uh, and this is the uh, the key by Tinto Brass. This actually has some of the uh, the bigger actors from his films, uh, not not for kids. Just to let you know, this one is actually it's a period film set back in uh, in World War uh, II and like World War II, yeah, 1940. Um, and uh, it has actually Frank Finley 
in this one and of and the uh, playing the wife it is Steph I gotta get this name right so I'm gonna cheat I'm gonna look it is Stephanie Sen Sendrelli and uh, you can look her up <laughs> and uh, find out exactly why there's a little bit of a little bit of scandal about that next up is one and I watched this one actually uh, recently and this one another period once back in the 1950s um, it's an odd little film it's really fun and it's funny and his movies are his movies like do have like a bit of like uh, like nudity and, and like situations like that but they're always come across like especially his early films as uh, as innocent as like really as like very innocent films uh, they don't come across like films you'd see like nowadays type of thing uh, not even like what you see in the in the in the, uh, in the 90s like those uh, Andrew Stevens type things or Shannon Worry or uh, one of those people uh, but this is Frivolous Lola and this scene is actually a scene from the uh, from the film I won't go too much into those now you if you want to look up Tinto Brass uh, you can you can do that one on your own um, that one get in trouble uh, and oh God, I'm gonna hide this cover <laughs> next up is the first Tinto Brass that I ever saw and my favorite that uh by him actually so if you like Tinto Brass uh, you can try and guess what that is uh, oh no it's understandable uh, all ladies do it uh, this this was a really I remember this film uh, and I, it stars Claudia Call and Tinto Brass had like these films where and I guess it was kind of big for especially for back in the day is like that the the ladies in the films were very you know very independent we'll go with uh, that uh, that's the word we're going to use we're going to use independent uh yeah, that's actually true they were pretty independent so i'll go through the three spaghetti westerns on blu-ray first then we'll get into the uh the stuff hey andy how's it going man we're, and then we'll get into the jello that is that see Vinny, for me that is his best now that being said it's the first one i saw and that may have like kind of biased me to it uh all ladies do it and then cheeky that's my two favorite by uh <laughs> show my team oh it's nice so this is a Italian Western that actually I think this is I'm pretty sure it's Italian yes it is uh, hmm is it I'm gonna say it's Italian I think it's Italian but it stars yeah but it stars a uh those are, <laughs> did you own the good ones man uh, this one has stars actually a, uh, a French actor in it and uh, that is Robert Hussein and uh, that is cemetery without crosses uh this one you know written by argento um uh, so we're still kind of in argento territory right now so this is actually a really fun one and uh i got the uh the kino lorber set the agent oh, what's it called agent double something the agents double 13 or double 30 whatever it's called anyway that you know you know the uh, spy kino lorber set that came out so the best movie on that set as Robert Hossein actually as kind of a Bondian style bad guy it's actually really really good um, I do actually really like this release it has the uh, cool little booklet in here and uh, the actually the alternate artwork is really good as well and has a really cool Western feel to it which is good because you know it's Western no next up is the uh, ever famous Django Prepare Coffin uh, again huge fan of Django films uh, as I showed in my uh, in my box set collection I got the Sartana set uh, which I think is at a print now actually uh, so I, uh, I lucked out on getting that one uh, Django pair of coffins actually is a, is a really fun one and uh, who's in this one has this Terrence Hill right yeah Terrence Hill from the Trinity films actually plays Django and I actually really like this one if you haven't seen this one uh, it's a super cool one basically uh, this guy you know Django's trying to get revenge I know actually uh, as you guys know as you know especially Vinny Michelle is one of the reasons that I just recently oh no you don't picked up like uh, a Martino film uh, that I ordered one um, because she got me she got like so hyped and excited talking about bird crystal plumage at the beginning of that uh, of that just of this podcast uh, that I uh, that I knew when I was ordering some stuff that I was gonna I had to get a jello I had to like dive in a bit and uh, I had to go with the you know oh I'll tell you which one I went with in a second actually so again very cool release
I love this movie. I, I, I really, really do. And this is done by, uh, by Tess Tessari. I'm going to, I'm totally butchering these names. Uh, and uh, Duccio Tessari, and this is the Ringo double feature, Pistol for Ringo, The Return of Ringo. If this is available and you don't have it, this is really, really good. Uh, this is an excellent Spaghetti Western. Uh, we'll double feature. It's, uh, it's two films. The, uh, you know, they got out, it's basically, you know, on one disc, but they're really, really good Spaghetti Westerns. Uh, depending on the mood you're in, a Pistol for Ringo is, is kind of a lighter one, but still really good, like action-filled, kind of tense. Uh, a Return of Ringo is a more serious, more revenge uh, oriented like uh, like spaghetti western film you you basically get all your spaghetti western needs like right here within these two films you're gonna get everything you need from a good spaghetti western in this set if you don't have it I do recommend picking it up if not now then down the road it is a great release and I, I strong I highly recommend it there is actually some great commentaries on there including one hey Trini from C Courtney Joyner who is uh, pretty much like a a, a western uh, buff, uh, and uh, this one is a Region B one, but there may be like one one in the uh, in North America as well. Um, uh, and see Courtney Joyner for me, I'll always remember him because he directed uh, my favorite Transfers film <laughs> from Full Moon, which is Transfers Three. Uh, I think it's called Return of Jack Death. It has like uh, Andrew Robinson as the villain in it. So see Courtney Joyner who. You know, originally like directed for Full Moon stuff like that. He's you see him on a lot of Western releases, and he uh, does uh, some great work on here as well. Exactly, yeah. But for me, he's always going to be like Transfers Three guy. It's that because I was such a huge fan of that film. That's when they finally go back into like. Uh, Go back into time. <laughs> go back, you know, go back to the to the right time. So we got some Babel to show you guys now. And uh, I was talking, was, Kathy was on here yesterday and she was she was uh, mentioning some Babel stuff. Hopefully, if she doesn't show up, she'll hopefully she sees this later because she was looking at getting some Babel stuff. And uh, this is a Bay of Blood. Uh, this is the only like one disc release that they put out of Babel so, so far that I that I know of. And this is a this is a cool cover. It's it's a little odd. I've never been like really hit like big on this cover because I don't think it's a good representation of what the film is. I understand completely where it comes from. I just think there's a lot better that they could have done with this. Um, this, I'm not sure if it's unintentional or not, but this looks like something completely different uh, than it is. I actually haven't. I definitely would, would pick that up. I'm a huge Full Moon fan. Hey, welcome back. Return of Batman Returns. Um, for this one, maybe. I mean, like, for the rest of them, uh, by far and large, by Arrow. Uh, for this one, uh, just for the cover. But they do have a decent cover right here. This Bloodbath cover is actually pretty cool. But for... Uh, <laughs> For the people who can see it, uh, I'm not, there's some unintentional humor on this cover that I'm definitely not going to get into. Uh, but yeah. Vinny, nowadays I seem, it seems like I'm lost when they don't have a versatile cover, to be completely honest. I'm like, I always, I always open up video things now expecting. It's, oh, so what's the reversible cover going to look like? And I'm always disappointed if I open up a Blu-ray and it doesn't have a reversible cover. I'm like, come on. You could have took that little effort. You know, all you have to do is just like, we can do like things with different art. Just a little bit. This one, uh, I highly uh, recommend. Oh, you, you saw at the end new Annabelle film? That's coming here the weekend. I'm thinking about going and seeing it. I'm not quite sure yet. But it's coming here at the uh, at the drive-in, and I love the cover to this. Uh, this film is actually really really good. I uh, I'm I'm super. I was super excited for uh, for this one, and this is the girl who knew too much. So this is you know, Mavis. I think it's his first Jallo. It's often considered to be like the first you know original Jallo. Uh, there was another name for this. I think it's like Evil Eye, and. Uh, in like North America. Both cuts of the film are on here, by the way. Yeah, so you want to see how sexy it looks on the inside, Vinny? 
You see, you're giving away some of your stuff, man. Don't tell them. Uh, so you look on the inside, and first off, you got this really, really sexy looking booklet. I'm not gonna lie, this is a really cool film. What's really neat about this is it's like old school Jello, so uh, it's not like any super sleazy or anything like that, but it's got a really good story. And uh, <laughs> so we got like the the girl who knew too much here. We got the Blu-ray of that one. You got the uh, the DVD of it, and we also have the uh, DVD for Evil Eye as well. I will actually flip it out here and show you the. I love this as well. This is a really nice kind of artwork. They do really great stuff. Uh, if you haven't like collected any of their Bab stuff, and I don't have all their Bab stuff yet, uh, Evil Eye is, uh, is the North American like uh, cut of this film actually, because there's two cuts. The Italian cut is called The Girl Who Knew Too Much, and the uh, the North American cut is Evil Eye. So yeah, the, it's got like it's it's super cool stuff. Now let's get into more of the uh, Bava stuff because the Bava stuff is really good and they go all out when it comes to Bava. Um, the one thing that we get screwed with over here in North America is that Bava comes normally through Kino. Kino's a great company. However, they don't put a lot of features on their uh, on their releases when it comes to the Bava stuff. And if there's alternate, if there's two versions of a film rather than kind of, oh, I would love to get that one. It's always been too expensive for them to be movie, but I do want that one. Um, but they've uh, they always put the releases separately, so you got to buy like two different discs to get the uh, to get like both films, both cuts of a film. When it, when Arrow puts out a, a release, they put out all cuts of the film on the on on that release. You're not like going around like saying, okay, I got to get the other like cut of the film. No, there, it'll be there. Next up is the awesome looking Black Sunday. I love. I, I think I'm going to enjoy Annabelle three. I like the uh, second one. Didn't like the first one, but I did like the second one. And when you open this up again, I will like show this is actually a thick, pretty thick booklet. But I like the hey mug, welcome, dude. I ordered some more arrow. <laughs> so you get the uh, Black Sunday. Uh, I love this artwork here, by the way. Far, far superior. Uh, like not, not even, not even joking, man. Uh, there's the second disc, so you get the Blu-ray. And you get the DVD, and you get like two DVDs actually. And uh, you get like the Italian artwork, which is actually actually kind of cool. And I, uh, I kind of dig that as well. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> uh, so what's really good about this release is this, you know, what the third disc on this one is, you know, what's, what's extra on this one. Uh, I'm going to go through through this here to kind of give you an idea of the scope of what, what Arrow does with their releases, with their BAB releases. Um, so as, uh, as most people know, uh, over here in North America, when a movie from Italy would, uh, would come over here, uh, usually I think that Black Sun is probably around 15 or 18. I'm not sure if it's in, the, in it or not. If it's in the sale or not, uh, hopefully it is. I'll check for you afterwards. Um, basically, they'd like, obviously, they dub the film over into English, thanks, Daz. And uh, they would uh, actually do a, uh, a different score. Les Baxter would rescore the film over in North America. Now, people like my dad grew up like watching a lot of these films in the theater. And so what he would know, what, it, what he would know is the Les Baxter score. He obviously, he wasn't over in Italy watching these films. He would know the Italian score. So, um, but the good thing about these releases, these bad releases is both scores uh, and both versions of the film are included on here. Um, Basically, you get the original release, the European release of the film with the original score by Roberto Nicolosi. You've got the Black Sun, the re-edited, redubbed AIP version uh, that's on here as uh, as well. Uh, again, we get three audios here. There's Italian, European English, and AIP English. So you get like the uh, the the cool old school. If you want to watch, go old school and watch the driving edition of this. Uh, then you can actually uh, check that out as well. There's, of course, an outer commentary by Tim Lucas, which we come to expect on these type of things right now. Introduction by critic Alan Jones. Interview with the star, 
uh, Barbara Steele, deleted scenes, uh, international trailer, US trailer, Italian trailer, TV spots. But the big thing on here, the big thing, uh, not sure if this one, uh, you know, you'll know, Vinny, this was on Kino release or not, but Ivan Piri, the uh, Italy's first sound horror film, uh, directed by Ricardo Fridi and Mario Bava, is actually included as a bonus on Black Sunday. So if you're into the Italian horror and you want to see the very first Italian horror film that was made over in Italy, done by Riccardo Fridi and Mario Bava, two amazing, awesome Italian directors, uh, this is the way to, uh, to see it. This is the first sound horror film that was ever done in, in Italy, and uh, it's, it's on here. So, uh, again, really cool stuff, and... Uh, there's even an interview apparently uh, in the uh, in the booklet talking about uh, the uh, I vampiri or vampire. I, I, I don't vampire v a m p i r i. I'm gonna go. Is the I silent? I vampire. I don't know. I'm not Italian. I don't know Italian. Uh, I just know I like the Italian films, and I should not do that accent. Uh, <laughs> Black Sabbath. This is one that always freaked me out. This. The story where the girls with the uh, with the old lady and she passes away, you know, the month with the ring, that uh that always creeped me out. That like you know, to see this. When I bought this real these releases, uh, I uh, I had them like on my uh, uh, on my coffee table uh, to uh, to watch, and I would always put this one um, down like this because it would always kind of freak me out. <laughs> All right, Evil Town. That is a unique release, man. I'm glad I got it. It's a strange movie. Are you Italian? Mm. And this has like... What was super cool about the Black Sabbath release is uh, when this came over here, and uh, like this isn't just a, a different dubbing and a different soundtrack. Uh, <laughs> but... Uh, they actually did these films in a like the segments because this is an anthology film. The segments are done in a completely different order with a completely different ending uh, from the Italian version to the uh, uh, to the to the uh, to the North American version. Um, so people have their preferred cuts. I prefer the uh, the uh, Italian cut myself. So you open it up here, and again, it's got another huge booklet, and I got okay. Well, we got the Delta Force here. Look. Uh, with some great kind of like fantastic artwork on here hey Kathy I just showed well I just mentioned you actually when I started doing this and uh, just so you know there's a Bay of Blood that's your which I think you said was your favorite with uh, with these releases here it's like there's incredible stuff and again as always with these Bava releases they're three discs so you'll always get the, uh, the Blu-ray I'm Batman. The uh, the DVD, and you get like a second DVD with the features on there as well. Uh, you'll always have like an alternate artwork. I always say the best one to start with is Black Sunday because you do get that extra film, that extra I Vampiri on uh, there, which is the first Italian horror film, a sound horror film. But uh, if you can grab a couple of them, uh, Black Sabbath is a fantastic film. Uh, again, like a lot of those like features, where there's like a interview with uh, with Mark Damon. Uh, for uh, these here, I think they're all Region B because Kino put out their editions of them as well. But I do recommend going Region Free, Kathy, because these here are worth their weight in gold. Uh, I would never go back when it comes to uh, to, to Baba. Uh, I couldn't or go for a Kino at this point. I, I just couldn't. There's just so much stuff put into this and so much love and so much care put into the Arrow releases. Uh, the Arrow Bavas were some of the first like kind of big releases that you saw them do. Exactly. Actually, somebody mentioned here on, um, on a, in a comment that, the, that some of the releases actually aren't locked. Uh, so when they'll, so they'll go put it in, they'll put it in on Region A, and they'll put it into their, to their player, and it'll work. Uh, I've got a region-free player, so I already have mine kind of put over to region, to, uh, to the other region anyway. So I rarely find out, it, sometimes by accident, if a movie's unlocked or not. Uh, but Black Sabbath, fantastic film. One of the more recent ones they put out from Argento uh, 
is this fantastic one. I, I love the cover of this one. It's uh, Edwidge Finch is in this, and Edwidge Finch didn't do. I think this is the only Bava, like really one of the only Bavas she did, because she worked a lot with with Sergio Martino, basically because she was like dating, um, like uh, Sergio Martino's brother, who was like the producer of the uh, of his films. But uh, Edwidge Finch is in this one. Uh, Hard Ross is in this. One. We got like a big, a really cool cast. William Berger. This is five dollars for an August Moon. It it does seem kind of tame, like as opposed to a lot of the stuff that's out there now. I do love this cover. What I really like is there's Mario Bava, Maestro of the Macabre. There's a documentary on Bava on here. So if you're you, you're starting to, to collect Bava and you haven't like collected anything of his before, you know, this is definitely if like you get like one of the classics that he put out and put out this one. It's a it's a good one to get because you can watch the documentary and like kind of bone up a bit on the uh, on Bava and like learn a bit about the uh, the Maestro, the Maestro himself. And this one here has a, a two disc set. So this is. Uh, I do like this. And we'll look at the alternate artwork as well, which is actually kind of cool. Edward Finish stands out in this film, as she does in every film that uh, that she is in, though Bava really didn't want to use her. Yeah, me too, actually. I, you know, it's the first time Vinny I've noticed the yellow, the yellow disc like this. So I kind of got like a cool gold gold type look to it. And again, when it comes to, uh, to booklets, we got And the lovely Edwidge Finch, of course, is on the back. And what's the uh, the postcard? Why well, it's the awesome film which everybody should own. What have you done to Solange? Uh, great film. Early Camille Keaton role. <laughs> We're getting through these. I was originally going to do all my like arrow that I had like downstairs. All the but I wanted to break it up so that it's not so overwhelming, uh, and that if there's certain ones that you're kind of looking towards, uh, you can like go to a specific video. Why can't they do? Do you know the the bad ones? I guess are because they're you know, Kino uh, has them as well. That's probably the reason behind them not being able to like you know to unlock uh, unlock these. They could get in trouble, uh, and sometimes companies will label it a region b and sometimes it won't be region b uh this one i don't know if that's the case or not but uh i'm sure some people there know um <laughs> next up is the classic i love absolutely adore this cover there was a steelbook out i uh, i was not a big a fan of the steelbook as i am of the actual like the uh <laughs> the original the blu-ray and this is blood and black lace uh you know often considered like the granddaddy of uh <laughs> of the giallo stuff basically uh, even though, you know, uh, the girl who knows, <laughs> what's it called again? Oh my God. The girl who knew too much is considered the first. This is kind of like Moon, uh, not Moon Rick, This is kind of like uh, Gold, Goldfinger in the way that a lot of the tropes that would come true to, like in most Giallo films, a lot of them would come within this one here. Like you have the, the killer with the unique weapon and the, uh, and, and the murder set pieces and the artistry to it. Uh, and, uh, and and the trench coat and uh, and the, and, the, and the and the hat, you would see that here in uh, in Blood and Black Lace. That would follow through to so many uh, Jello films after this. Uh, again, this is a fantastic release. There is a great video essay on here as well. Uh, there's a panel discussion on on Bava featuring Argento Lamberto Bava and Steve Delia Casa uh, that was done back in 2014. So there's some really cool stuff on here. Again, this is another three disc release. So you. Open it up here, and you got this big, thick booklet, and there's the that's what we got here. Coffee on the inside, and of course the the classic killer. One of these days, that's when, one of these years, that's what I'm going to do. Me and my better half will go. I'll go dress up as like a Jallo killer, and she can go dress up as my victim, something like that. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, so here's the uh, Blu-ray. Actually, this one is unique in the fact that there's so many special features and stuff on this one here. Now, just to let you know, guys, this one is region free. So this release is a region free release. Uh, so you can see region one and two listed right there on the Blu-ray. Uh, and there's a second Blu-ray. And this Blu-ray is like just, you know, extra features and stuff like that on there. And there's like a, a, D, a DVD of extras here as well. So just to kind of kind of give you an idea, there's a psychoanalysis new documentary on Blood and Black Lace, the origins of the genre. 
uh, we got a oh, appreciation of Helena Ke of people that worked on, uh, the that were the uh, I, I totally lost myself. So lots of features. Yeah, guys, if you if any of you guys here know which uh, what like you got reaching free players, you got got it from from two twenty. You got you have any suggestions for Kathy? It would be fantastically appreciated to to let her know because uh, I don't I haven't gotten anything from two twenty yet, so I don't know. But I'm feeling that they're going to be a company that once my players start to die, I'm going to have to go to in the future. But I strongly recommend this one. And again, it's a region A and B. Uh, one and two release so super cool stuff <clears throat> next up is Kaltiki the immortal monster this is by Ricardo Friedi it is kind of like a, a take on the blob a little bit more uh, more adult a little bit more uh, kind of bloodier and it's got a, it's got a really cool subplot in it as well I actually really like this one there's some nice gore effects uh, in here too and again, this is by Ricardo Friedi and Mario Bava. Basically, what would happen in a lot of the cases is Ricardo Friedi would get like tired of uh, of doing something, or he wouldn't want to do it, and he, he just you know, he wouldn't finish it. Bava would come in, uh, and and in other cases, like in this one here, uh, Bava would be like the guy that would be like shooting some of the most mostly the effect sequences and the monster scenes and stuff like that. And Bava would be like a si assistant director um, type of thing, like you know, a second unit director. Again, there's some great features on here as well. Interview, court, uh, auto commentary with with Tim Lucas and you got like two discs here and the, uh, the old classic looking one I, I I think I like this one better but you know this kind of old school a lot of people go with the Sony models I gotta take a sip of my tea I'm not gonna finish this hey cool blue We are going through Arrow, and then I'm going <clears> to <throat> reveal what I'm going to be revealing in about a week. This is the Arrow release of uh, this film. It's just a size, but as you guys saw earlier, I showed you the DVD edition of this one. Uh, I also have the Synapse Steelbook of this one, and this is the Blu-ray edition of Tenebrae. This is the upgrade. Uh, so this isn't the original Blu-ray. The original Blu-ray Tenebrae wasn't. Uh, Tenebrae wasn't very well done. They actually, the DVD was better done. But then uh, they put out a new edition of Tenebrae, which is, again is fantastic. It has its own features that are not available on the uh, on the Blu-ray that's out there from uh, from uh, from the uh, from Synapse. So in order to get, in my opinion, in order to get a uh, the ultimate Tenebrae, because this is my favorite general film, by the way, guys. You, you got to get both releases. You, you do. I, I know. Spend a bit more money. But it's like, it is a really sexy release though. And I love the artwork on the covers. Basically because they use actual scenes from the films. The, the There's the iconic scene right there. With Dario Nicolotti. A very beautiful Dario Nicolotti. And the other like majorly iconic scene from earlier in the film. Right there. I love... The way these, the, you don't see the these photo, like art covers done, like art discs done, very often. And uh, hey, scholar, but uh, this one stands out. It really does. Not yet. I, I'm still waiting for the put shock shotgun. Until then, I got to hold on to my uh, to my Anchor Bay release of that one. And again, there's a great book for this one here. Definitely pick this up. Uh, if you have not seen Tenebrae, you owe it to yourself to see Tenebrae. Uh, it's an uh, amazing, amazing release. Just incredibly well done. Yeah, me too. Cool, but that's the thing. It's such a good film. You just got to keep buying it, right? So there's the Blu-ray, the Tenebrae. So as you can see, I'm not doing these in any particular order. Uh, next up is... One that does, when you really think about it, if you don't know the film, I guess, you know, but it does kind of give a bit away. But I really like the cover. It's like the art on the cover is like, uh, it's odd, but it's kind of cool. And this is Cat of Nine Tails. Now, I've got the new 
from Cat on Nine Tails. You guys saw in my uh, in my box sets I, uh, when I did that video. I've got the upgraded Cat on Nine Tails, the one with the new uh, with the new transfer. This was the original Cat on Nine Tails transfer that was out. I do like this art, and I could not and couldn't give it up because I do enjoy the art, and I do like the way the Cat on Nine Tails is is done across here. Um, but it does give you know, anybody seen this movie? You're gonna know this. This this is a pretty like this is a pretty big moment uh, that they're actually uh, showing on here. Uh, there's you know there's some features on her. Sergio Martino talking about Giallo films, uh, or basically talking about with Lucio Cosi. It was a fantastic interview by the way. Uh, I love the fact that this has one of the early uh, art cards in here. So we got Sisters, and it's a really unique kind of like poster to Sisters. I, I love. The uh, this poster here, the way that's done, though it does kind of give that's Siamese twins at birth, doesn't that kind of give a little bit away for sisters as well? Um, uh, this is the spoiler edition. Um, uh, so here is the um, Cat Nine Tales uh, booklet done by Alan Jones, who uh, did a lot of this stuff back here. It actually says, you know, not to be sold separately, so be careful. Uh, and again, there is like an alternate artwork on here as well, which you most of us here in North America have seen as the artwork that usually would show on like kind of like the Blue Underground release stuff like that. That's more of the artwork that we would see. Uh, that's the thing when you're going, when you're not region free. Uh, before like companies like Scream Factory came around, uh, we got like the most boring friggin' art. It, got, it was just whatever was available, whatever it was. Doesn't matter, put it on there, <laughs> whatever. No, we'll just, we'll just get the poster. We'll get, we'll, get, we'll get a poster, it'll be okay. But Arrow was one of those companies that came out and they started like doing these like this unique like different artwork and like working with certain like artists and work with them like frequently like uh, like there's people that they work with right now. D D Melton was more one of their one of their more uh, early artists and uh, the guy that the guys that they use now there's a lot of like more I guess artsy style like you know because they've I guess because they've come up a bit in the world that's why. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually it is. Uh, our, there was. It was number two in the in the animal trilogy. Uh, it was number two, I think. So yeah, because there's uh, Birth Crystal Plumage, uh, Cat of Nine Tails, and Four Flies in Grey Velvet. All uh, those are the three animal films that com comprises the the animal trilogy for Dario Argento. Uh, the Bird is by far and large, in my opinion, the the best of that three trilogy. Uh, all three of them are great. Uh, if, if I was to rank them in order, I would go Bird being the best, next being Four Flies, and third being Cat of Nine Tails. Basically, because the reasoning behind the killer, I don't know, they showed an eye. So, uh, anybody want to give some guesses? Somebody said anguish, another person said, uh, oh God, there was a, there's a few different ones. I want to see something different. So, this is one of my favorite, this is one of my, my the favorite art. That I've, that I've seen on any era release, and uh, that is for what have you done to Solange. As much as I love Arrow stuff, I have to say recently, I have been, haven't been blown away by a lot of their announcements. Like there's been good announcement, but it's been a while since they've had an announcement that's ever, like, it was like, wow, like, you know, that's, that's me posted on, on like Instagram right away. Uh, there's been like good ones and there's ones like yeah I want to get that one down the road, but there's been nothing yet like in in the in the announcements like this year specifically it's only like early in the year really, um, so June, but uh, that's really made me say yeah I'm 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 saving up for that I want that one I I'm gonna make sure I don't miss out on that one, uh, which is you know I probably should have done for phenomenon I didn't do it, but what we've done this line is an excellent excellent gel if you have not seen this one, uh, definitely check this one out uh, this is by Massimo Delamano, and uh, not only is a fantastic director, but you see his work. Uh, Cruising's a fantastic film. That's the thing. But it wasn't like, and I'm glad to see it come out. It's like, and it's, I know it's one I'm going to pick up. But it's been a while. Like for me, Kathy, I'm so into the, uh, I'm so into like, like a lot of this stuff. Like you see, I got a lot of like Italian stuff, Jalos and stuff like that. So. Those big announcements, those Arrow announcements, when they did like the Deep Red or the Birth Crystal Plumage, that type of stuff, that that style stuff, that that bowls me over. Uh, it maybe I'm a little jaded too, where I've seen so much of this stuff. I remember the first time Arrow kind of like disappointed. I felt like they disappointed me. I remember back in the day because they were still going with Cult Labs at the time, 
and uh, the, they said big announcements coming and I got all hyped and excited and there's a date for it. And that was a bunch of like trauma stuff. And I like trauma, but uh, it wasn't exactly what I thought it was like. Oh, I'm so snobby at the time. This, this, this is not error worthy. I, you know, surf ninjas, surf ninjas must die is not what I need to get in my error release. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's, that's just me though. People get excited about different things. Cruising is the one I do want though. That is one of the, the ones that they announced that I was surprised but like pleasantly surprised to see that announced. If you have not checked this one out though, please guys do check this one out. Uh, the guy that did this movie uh, was the cinematographer on a fistful of dollars, a few dollars more, basically he worked for Sergio Leone. Um, this, uh, if you remember the movie, I Spit on Your Grave, Camille Keaton has a uh, pivotal role in this film. Uh, I won't say who she is, but let's just say it's she's very, very important. And uh, she's very important behind the uh, the reason behind the killer as well. As you can see, the booklet in here, sorry, the, the art card was for Uli Lummel's Tenderness of the Wolves, which I do not own, by the way. And this is the... I do like it often when they try to, to mix it up and do like some different stuff in here, so... Not right away. I mean, I like Old Boy and I do... I don't think I've got an addition to Old Boy right now. I know I need to get Tenderness to us. But you know, I can't get everything. It's like, it just takes so much. <laughs> oh, it's definitely different. And there's the other artwork for What Have You Done to Solange. Vinny, if you don't have this one, I do recommend this one. Uh, this one is really, really, really good. I can't remember if you got this one or not. Um, I have to look at my phone and my phone's charging. But this is an excellent release, and uh, there's some great, great interviews and, and great, uh, like, behind-the-scenes stuff on, uh, on this one. I strongly recommend it. Next up is one that goes, you've never seen what, oh, dude, don't read about it. Uh, like, next time you order, grab this one and go in blind and, uh, and just watch it. It's really good. Massimo, Massimo Delamano is... is actually a damn good director and you know being Sergio Leone's cinematographer for you know those westerns he's, he's you know you're going to get like really good cinematography within his films as well and unlike Jerry you're not going to go sleep uh, <laughs> but uh basically and I will tell you right now this is this is the plot I'm going to sell you on this Vinny I'm going to sell you on this right now because I got to sell somebody something right away uh, a, a sexually sadistic killer is preying on the girls of St. Mary's Catholic College Student Elizabeth witnessed one of the murders, but her hazy recollections of a knife-wielding figure in black do nothing to the further. Exactly, that is one. That is a kind of like a. I don't have the follow-up. I got. I think I do have the follow-up. Should I get check? Uh, to further the police's investigations, why is the killer choosing these young women, and what does it have to do with a girl named Solange? Again, you know, Camille Keaton's in this one. A very early role for her. Christina Gabal was in The Living Dead of Manchester Morgue is in this one here as well. Um, features all the hallmarks of the classic jail of the amateur detective, the black love killer, as well as a lush score by Ennio Morricone. Uh, great stuff on here, by the way. Brand new commentary by Alan Jones and Kim Newman, who do amazing together on commentaries. What Have You Done to Decency? A conversa conversation with Karen Bell, the actress's thoughts on, on the classic jello. First Action Hero, a newly edited 2006 interview with actor and former stuntman Fabio Testi, including a look at his role in Solange. Old School Producer, a newly edited 2006 interview with producer Fulvio Luc Lu Lucisano. I'm going to go with that. And uh, in Innocence Lost and Schoolgirls in Pearl Tril Trilogy, Pearl Trilogy, a brand new visual essay by Michael McKenzie. Make sure you do not watch this visual essay until you have seen these films they are fantastic uh all th this is a there's like they're they're kind of a, they're a loose trilogy and they don't like go together you don't have to watch one you, you watch them in a specific order to know them uh they each have their own individual storyline if any am i selling you on this one am i selling you on this movie it is utterly fantastic and it's always one of those there's always those unheralded hung sung jellos and and that is one of them uh, and I, <laughs> next up, of course, is the one I think that everybody's got, uh, and uh, and rightfully so, because this is definitely 
uh, in my opinion, the best, one of the best movies that he ever made, uh, and uh, definitely the best Jalo that he made. And he did make some other Jalos as well. Uh, but this is this is my favorite, and that is Don't Torture a Duckling. Uh, again, pretty, like, brutal uh, film, and it's uh, it's definitely like uh, he takes some some pretty big shots at a certain in, in like uh, we'll say industry uh, in this uh, in this film because I don't want to say too much because it'll give away who the who the killer is, but uh, a fantastic cast in this one here. Uh, Florinda Balkan is in this one, uh, amazing in this one here. We got Thomas Milan in this one, Barbara Boucher, of course, from the Red Queen Kill Seven Times. Uh, you, as soon as Barbara Boucher comes on the screen, those eyes, you know her right away. Uh, this is a stunningly amazing film by Fulci. And anybody that ever, like, kind of, like, doubts Fulci or doubts the stuff that he does just has to watch this film. And, uh, and, and, then, and then never doubt Fulci again, because this is masterful. This is extremely well done. And uh, I, I do really enjoy this one here. This is a great commentary on here by Troy Howarth. Um, there is Giallo alla Campagna, which is a video discussion with, my, with Mikhail J. Coven. Um, you get like a new video essay by uh, critic uh, Kat Ellinger on here called Hell is Already in Us, which is actually really cool. But make sure you don't watch the video essay before you uh, watch the film itself. Or you will really enjoy it, though. There's a, a Lucio Fulci remembers a 1988 interview with uh, with the film's co-writer and director Lucio Fulci. You pass that on Fulci, don't. You sit, still you you got you've got time. Dune is still in us. Uh, but again, it's it is a fantastic release. And I will let you see the alternate artwork in there as well and stuff. So first off, here is this uh, really kind of cool looking. booklet and what did I get an art yes I did get an art card and actually ironically this doesn't happen to me a lot but the don't torture duckling art card came with don't torture duckling so super like that and contraband I got the shameless edition out oh, this got like a lenticular cover I'm sure it's probably it's one you got too uh, really good one and uh, again fantastic little film if you haven't checked it out yet definitely do so it's a great jello speaking of underrated jellos <clears throat> let's get into a uh, one that uh people don't talk about enough and uh this is by the guy that did the ringo films and that is the duccio tesseri Tess tesseris and this is the bloodstained butterfly aside from having like a super gorgeous cover I, uh, I really dug this one. I, I really got into this film. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, that's what I'm saying, Vinny, because, you know, like, we'll just take whatever. Uh, but, oh, you know, they went for, like, s some super high grade, like, art. This is, like, these things here, like, people say, well, why do I need to collect stuff when, I, when, I, when basically I can just go grab a, I can just get, get like, a hard drive or something like that? Because stuff like this. Red Queen Kills Seven Times is an amazing film. Uh, Bloodstained Butterfly is a really good jello. It's, it's a little different. Uh, Helmet Berger's in this one here, you know, a guy from Dorian Gray. Uh, and uh, what's kind of really neat is this one has a bit of like a, uh, a courtroom aspect to it as well. So they're a little bit different there. And uh, I did enjoy this one. I enjoyed this one a lot more than I thought I would. I went into it, and I, this was a night I was like super tired too. So, and I was super tired. I was, I had like, I had a rough day, and everything was going against me enjoying this film. Everything was going against me like enjoying this at all or watching it. But I, like, totally, it blew my mind. I loved this film. Uh, I, I, as soon as I watched it, I watched Murder in B Flat Minor, which is a, a, a visual essay done by, on the film by Troy Howarth. And uh, I think I watched the interview with uh, Evelyn Stewart as well, like Ida Galley, you know, so, real name. I really like the uh, the way that it looks on the inside of here as well. So you got this is the book booklet. I really enjoy that. And the art card, which by the way I've never seen because I didn't know it was in here, is for the movie Suture, which I do not have. But uh, one of these days I'll pick it up. And so let's see the alternate art is definitely unique on this one here. And this is the Bloodstained Butterfly. 
but again, another release that I uh, that I highly love. Next up is the this is probably the first full sheet I aside from, like Blu-ray that I picked up. And uh, <clears throat> when this one was announced, I remember back then they had like a steel book of it, and they had like a window box edition of it, and uh, the regular edition. I just grabbed the regular edition, and of course I had this movie. Uh, on, of course, the uh, the Blue Underground release as well. Uh, I got this one with like two or three releases. But it is that good of a film that I needed it. And that is... Uh, uh, zombie Flesh Eaters. Otherwise known here as Zombie, of course. Or, you know, in Italy, I guess, the Zombie too. Molucho Fulci's Zombie Flesh Eaters. Such a cool release. I mean, uh, it was so exciting to get this one. Look at all the features. <laughs> So there are a ton of features on here. Um, open up, see it's one of the early ones, so we get like the, this. And then of course we get the huge, huge book. This is actually, wow, this is a really big booklet. Uh, booklet on here. And it was just like, just a two disc release actually. Um, but actually two Blu-rays. And it wasn't like a Blu-ray DVD, like the same thing over again. It was that there was that many features that it took two Blu-rays. And there was the other artwork on there for Zombie Flesh Eaters as well. A really fun film. And it's the film that like, you know, Zombie vs. Shark is introduced. Again, yeah, it is extremely classic video nasty. And one of the one, one of the best. As you guys know, I have the, when Blue Underground decided to re-release this with a lenticular cover with like different artwork on it. I went for the one with the eye, uh, eye injury. Because I'm sick that way. <laughs> but this is, a, this is a, a great release. Next up is one I almost rebought. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I had forgotten that I bought this film, which is really weird because I actually did watch this film. And uh, this is a film that is liked by Eli Roth and uh, Quentin Tarantino. And again, uh, a bit super crazy and fun, is Nightmare City. I had a lot of fun with this one. Uh, this, I would, I don't know if you consider this one a classic, but it is a lot of cheese. It's a cheese fest and it's a lot of fun. There's actually some really good features on there for like, uh, for Nightmare City as well. So that's actually kind of cool. It's a fun little film and I, uh, I do enjoy it. If you got the movie, I don't have it now. Uh, I would recommend like maybe double featuring with something like Bruno Mattei's Rats or, uh, you know, kind of something like that. This is more of the kind of like the zombie post-apocalyptic one. Uh, this is it really? I, it's been a while since I've seen this, but I, I'm going to say the grain was meant for... No, I, I, I have no idea. I, 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 like the, I like the print of the film. Uh, because didn't Raro put this out too? And Raro had like a, a lesser edition of this. So, so I'll go with... So for as far as I know, until they put out like another print, still the one to go with, I think. Unless you know a better one, then, you know, say so in the comments so people know. So, so this is as good as it gets, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess. Yeah, the alternate title for this was City of the Walking Dead, and I do like this artwork here as well, by the way. Actually, this artwork here, City of the Walking Dead, is actually better than Nightmare City, to be honest with you. So you see that artwork? That's okay. This, this is awesome. That looks cool. And I've got one more, and then I'm going to tell you what I ordered today. And this is a different one. Uh, this is by Joe D'Amato. Joe D'Amato would later be known for like his super kind of like sleazy and gory style films, especially sleazy. Uh, he'd even work with like in adult films with uh, adult actors like Rocco Sfredi. Sfredi and, uh, but this is a very tame film by, uh, by Joe D'Amato. Very, very tame. That is Death Smalls on a Murderer. That's it's directed by Joe D'Amato. It stars Klaus Kinski. I expected this one to be way more exploitive than it actually is. It's actually a pretty standard tale <coughs> and uh, a little bit different. It does have Ua Allen in this one. Uh, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing her name right. Uh, but she was like the star of the movie Candy. And uh, she was in like Death Lays an Egg as well. Uh, again, really fun. What's really good about this one and I, is there is a... Uh, where's it at? Smiling on the Taboo, Sex, Death, and Transgression in the Horror Films of Joe D'Amato. 
It's a video essay by Kat Ellinger. I, uh, I was home by myself and I uh, watched this one night and I watched the, the video essay and I was talking to my better half and I, I missed part of it and I went back and I watched it again. Really good video essay anyway. Uh, it's an early one, so it's different. I mean, like the stuff, the style <coughs> that you would get for Joe D'Amato wasn't like, wasn't carved in stone then. Like the, uh, like later on, like, like, like many directors, like he, he's kind of feeling his way around. <coughs> but uh, it is, you know, it, it's definitely a, an interesting watch and one of, not one of my favorite seven films, but it, it is a fun film. And for me, uh, the, I would say that it's worth it uh, for if you can get it at a decent price, it's definitely worth it for that video, visual essay uh, that Kelly Ellinger does alone. If you're a Joe D'Amato fan, you want to watch that essay. It's really good. Uh, you got double face, I'm guessing, right? That's because I saw your comment down there. Now, double face isn't a jello. Uh, not not by not not under the standard. Hey, Michelle, welcome. Michelle here, by the way, did a recent episode of Just the Discs. She is the Arrow go-to girl for the Just the Discs podcast. So if you have not listened to that episode of uh of, of just the disc and you're looking at the arrow stuff uh shame because it's really good and be, michelle is the reason behind some of the stuff that i picked up one one in specific so michelle's excitement as i mentioned to you earlier on but i can embarrass her now um, <laughs> um on, on the just this podcast was uh she first talked about one of my favorite Argentos, and that is Birth Crystal Plumage, which I don't know. Uh, did I show that one here? Because I got that one, uh, and I got the regular release of it, so I'm not quite sure why that's not here. Uh, but I, yeah, I got a bigger. Oh, it's probably it was in my uh, slip, my window boxes. That's why, and I'll show that in my last video. So she really talked up Birth Crystal Plumage because Argento is is amazing. Argeno is, is like God uh, when it comes to these, uh, these, these type of films. So right next to him is Sergio Martino, who is, is awesome. And he did films like Your Vice is a Locked Room and Only Have the Key, uh, the classic like slasher, giallo hybrid called Torso. Um, though your, your Vice is actually my favorite. People, most people like go with Torso. Your Vice is actually, the, my, is, I, I prefer that one over. Over that, I know sacrilege, burn me at stake. But um, actually, asked uh, actually, well, Steph Michelle got back to me f quickly uh, with, with, on Twitter. We were talking, and uh, I wanted to pick up a Jello. I knew that I was going to pick up one film, but I, I wanted to grab like a Jello with it. And uh, there was two uh, that uh, great minds think alike. Um, there was two that stood out. They're both Martino. There was. Uh, Suspicious Death of a Minor, I think it's called something like that. And uh, there was The Case of a Scorpion's Tail. And initially, just on like title alone, I was going to say, okay, I'll, I'll, I'm going to get with Suspicious Death of a Minor. Because they're like, you know, the what have you done, Solange, that type of thing. And uh, then I think within like moments of one another, both uh, Michelle and Steph like tweeted back, you know, get get Case of Scorpion's Tail. It's really good. Um and there's some really great features on there, so uh, I looked at it, and then I looked, then I went to the to the you know the feature section tab, and holy crap, uh, it was like this long list of stuff, like uh, a visual essay on like all of Martino's films, uh, audio commentary by Troy, Troy Howarth, uh, a booklet with like write up by, by Rachel you know, Nesbitt. I hope I got her last name right, uh, she, um, because she's she does excellent excellent stuff. Um, so there was there was a ton of stuff anyway. So I, I was like literally ordering at that time, because I had put in with that in the cart with that one. I also picked up uh, Waterworld. No, don't don't judge me. Uh, don't judge me. Um, I I really wanted Waterworld. It's the one that my my oldest used to watch when she was little, and uh, we'd watch it over and over again. But I think that aside from that, and that having a 176 minute long edition of Waterworld, that's a long edition of that film, it has a 102 minute long documentary on the making of Waterworld. And the making of movies that are good 
are <laughs> you all are, 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 are fantastic. Are, the making of movies that do abysm, abysmally bad are gold. Um, I am so excited to watch this documentary, so I hope it does like uh, it, it stands up to to what I'm expecting because th this is a movie that went over two hundred million dollar budget, but was uh, Mad Max on water. Such there was a million insane decisions made within this film. Uh, I do too, actually. Um, so that documentary, I, I got to see the documentary. And uh, I didn't get the edition with the poster and the cards or anything like that. That's gone out. What's really neat, though, is that even though it's like, it's like you know, it's a non-limited edition, it, uh, the only thing you lose is the TV version of the film, which I'll be honest with you, is the, uh, if you want it, you want, the, you want the, the original theatrical cut and you want the Ulysses cut. Because the, the, uh, the TV version, it's, uh, it's the Ulysses cut without the, uh, the blood and nudity is what it is. There's not a lot of nudity in Waterworld. Uh, but uh, I think there's like a, if I can remember, there's like a, a butt double scene for uh, Jan Trip, Triplehorn uh, in, one, uh, in one like small sequence of the film. But uh, there's, you know, some violent stuff that's taken out that's put back into the Ulysses cut. Uh, I really want to, uh, to see the documentary. What's really neat though is that they didn't just like, they could have just went out and just said, okay, we'll just give it, you know, regular edition. We'll just do this type of thing. But no, they, they went the, the extra mile. It's, it has a slip too. So he's got a cool, or as he called over in the UK, an O card. Um, so it has the, uh, it has the O card over it as well. So it's not just like a, a normal regular edition. You're going to get that cool looking slip kind of, kind of sexy. So if you, if you're interested at all in Waterworld, it has the theatrical cut. It has the Ulysses cut, which is 176 minutes long. That's like one massive dive in the water world. It's got a 102 minute documentary. There's a bunch of other features on there as well. None of the features are missing. Uh, no, see, that's the thing, uh, Scotter. What happened is if you've, you got the regular release, right? You know, not the regular, I mean, you got the limited edition release. So the limited edition release had a bit of a hard box, right? Kind of a slip in type thing. But they actually gave a really nice looking O card for the, uh, for the uh, for the non-limited release so there was a hard box for the uh, I think it's hard box I'm pretty sure it is for Waterworld for when it first came out but the uh, the new release the one that's coming out now uh, all it's missing is the, is the is the TV print which you know you, uh, honestly this is one time where you don't need the TV print uh, and you're missing the you know the, the book and, uh, and, and the things but it's got like this really cool o, o card slip cover. So no matter, no matter which way I want to want to call it, but I actually I hadn't seen anybody actually on online like talking about it or that I'd picked it up. And after I ordered, about like ten minutes after I ordered it, I went on YouTube and I saw this guy who put up like uh, his 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 haul anyways his Arrow video haul because I always look for people's hauls when I'm doing stuff like this. Um, and uh, he had it like it was the is the fifth thing that he that he sh that he showed, and he and it was like uh, it had this like cool looking slip. I'm really excited about getting that one, because when you go onto the website, if you look on there, you notice that it doesn't show it with the just with a regular clear, clear case like say this one here for instance, uh, and so and I was kind of like that looks like it's got a slip, but will a regular edition have a slip? I mean, because you know it's, but yeah, it has a slip, and you're still getting the big Ulysses cut, which for me uh, that's what I thought was going to be cut out. Because Ulysses cut is the uh, you know was the cut that everybody wanted. But uh, so that'll be interesting to check out. Um, now, that was my second order. I did those. Now that one may take a while to get to me because I did something like I mentioned here in the first video. But for people that that weren't here, <coughs> I ordered two orders. Basically, because the way the BOGO goes, I'm not going to get screwed over and like, oh, look, the two lowest price ones are the ones that are going to go. No, I want two things that are going to be the same price. So those two, both, it's a case of Scorpion's Tail, Waterworld. You know, even though Waterworld is like cool, sexy looking one, it's a, it's 18, there was 18 pounds each. <laughs> uh, and uh, be careful there, man. Uh, so, you know, get buy one, get one free. Did that and I did regular shipping on that one. I was nervous about doing it. I haven't done it in a long time, but it was like very inexpensive, so I grabbed the regular shipping. Now, I also grabbed two box sets, and with those, I did not want to grab regular shipping. I was going to try the uh, 
you know, I was going to do the, the, the fast shipping. So usually once they get the order goes through, basically it takes a few days to go through the warehouse and stuff like that. Once I know that the order is going through, it usually takes two to three days to get to me. That's usually, that's the standard amount of time for Arrow. When it comes to their, uh, you know, you pay for better shipping, you get better shipping. Um, so I grabbed the two box sets that I uh, initially looked at. Well, one of them wasn't available when I first made the order, so, but I did want to, want to get it. So I grabbed the American Horror Project Volume 2. I'm, I'm a really big fan of regional horror. Looking forward to checking that out. Uh, again, three amazingly classic films. I'm going to see if I can actually find them on here. The big sell, selling point on me, uh, yes, that's a smart move. you got to do it that way, man. Uh, with the American Horror Projects. I'm a big John Hayes fan. Uh, I like Grave the Vampire a lot. I got Cutthroats from uh, Vinegar Syndrome when they put it out. I got the original DVD, like limited edition of it, before they put out like the Blu-ray. And once they put out the Blu-ray with the five films, five years, I got that, that edition of Cutthroats as well. It's just a cheesy little, like, a low-budget, like, uh, film. But I, I really enjoy it. Uh, so there is a John Hayes film on here. And... Uh, the classic version now would have been. Not, they were smart to do it this way, I think. Uh, but I understand. Yeah, I get, I get what you mean. Uh, and of course, the American Horror Project Volume Two. This is a brand new release. It just came out. It is a region-free release, so it is uh, both in you know UK, North American. Uh, there are three films on here. First off is Dream No Evil. That is the film by John Hayes. Uh, I don't remember if I seen this one or not. I really don't remember it at all. Uh, there's a film depreciation by Stephen Thrower, of course, who, uh, who did that amazing book. Uh, there's a commentary with Kat Ellinger and Sam Deegan. Already, I'm super excited about this one. Uh, and then this came up. This I got really excited about. The Hollywood After Dark, the early films of John Hayes. Hollywood, oh my God, did John Hayes make Hollywood After Dark? With Rue McClanahan? Uh, now see, here's the thing. Um, Shout Factory... Uh, put out this these four things. So they were originally done by by Rhino, but then Rhino was you know that stuff was bought out from Shout Factory. Uh, and the and they put out like four film crew. And basically this was the other guys from Mystery Science Theater before they did Rift Tracks, and they did these four film crew releases like Wild Women Wango. Uh, there's a there's there's four of them anyway. Uh, one of them is Hollywood After Dark with Rue McClanahan. Yeah, the girl from Golden Girls, you know, Blanche, Blanche Devereaux. Uh, so this is called Hollywood After Dark, the early films of John Hayes, 1959 to 1971, which makes me think that I watched a John Hayes movie and I did not know it was a John Hayes movie. Um, okay, what else we got on here? Because I haven't looked at this yet, by the way, guys. This is, I just like went on. I didn't look at the features. This is my first time actually looking at the features. Uh, I just uh, knew that I had the first box that was really, really good. Um, there's a reversible sleeve, you know, with newly commissioned artwork by the Twins of Evil. And, okay, what else? There's a writer, Chris, okay, somebody, on the celebrated character actor, Edmund O'Brien, who I really do like, actually. Excerpt from auto interview with actress Rue McClanahan. Well, damn it. It was, uh, it was her. Uh, uh, and it was him. So, yes, Hollywood After Dark must have been a John Hayes film. Uh, learning something new every day. That's that's what I do in front of you guys. I learn something new every day. The second film is Dark August. So again, we get Appreciation by Stephen Thrower. Uh, brand new auto commentary with the writer-director Martin Goldman. Uh, on-camera interview with Goldman here as well. We get a brand new on-camera interview with the uh, producer Marianne Cantor. The Hills Are Alive, Dark August, and Vermont Folk Horror. This is actually really interesting. Author and artist Stephen R. Bissett. On dark, on dark August and its content within the wider realm of the genre of filmmaking done out of Vermont. So basically, a, a look at, at Vermont filmmaking and I guess regional horror in that area. So that should be really interesting and that's something I'm strongly looking forward to checking out. And of course, the original press book. The Child has the least amount of features, but uh, I'm really like anticipating The Child. This looked like the most intriguing one. Um, this as the film appreciation by Stephen Thrower. I do commentary with the director and producer of the film. Uh, director Robert Voskanian and producer Robert Dadashian, moderated by Stephen Thrower. Uh, brand new ca on-camera interviews with uh, those two people, uh, theatrical trailer and original press book. 
So I, uh, I knew I had to pick up that release. I had the first volume. I'm a huge fan of John Hayes. Apparently, I didn't know that I had another John Hayes film, um, but I did. And last, but definitely not least, and I originally wasn't going to pick this one up uh, because I thought, I, you know, it was only the box. And the way I saw it first is that basically if I was to buy this one, just the movies on their own, it would be 20 pounds less than if I was to buy the box set. And I'm not getting the, you know, I'm not getting the book right because there's a huge book within this box that one originally came out, which isn't in the re-release. Um, I thought, you know, so I'll, maybe I'll, I'll wait on it. And but I couldn't uh, basically because at the end of the day, it's a buy one get one. They lost. I, I actually think that's kind of good that they lost out on those because he his stuff that he did is way better than the better than like it seems like an odd fit. Uh, but yeah, I bought the house collection as well, so I got that one coming. Um, I do have the. Uh, horror show downstairs from Screen Factory. Uh, this will definitely be a superior edition to that film. I'm a huge fan of the horror show. And uh, oddly enough, when I saw the review reviews for the box set, a couple of like reviewers said the extremely mean-spirited film, The Horror Show. Uh, I'm not sure who's seen The Horror Show or if they've ever seen the film to the end of the film. Uh, is that... Uh, the horror show has the most happy, like, sunny ending you can imagine for this type of horror film. Everything goes, like, just spoiler alert, everything's good at the end of the horror show. There's no last minute jump scare or anything like that. There's no Nightmare on Elm Street thing. It's just the opposite. It's, it's the happy uh, thing. So horror show is this, like, kind of cool, brutal killer. And uh, the guy that's playing the kid over there whose name has escaped me right now. I do apologize. I think it's Brian. Is it Brian? No, not Brian Johnson. Uh, I can't remember his name right now anyway. But uh, the guy that did it, he really commits to the role of that killer. And it, it makes a difference. It really does. When you, when, you, uh, when you do something like this, you can see people that are kind of half-assing it. And I'm going to give you an example, which some people aren't going to like. But uh, as much as I like the actor, and he's a fantastic actor, actor Jackie Earl Haley, when he did Nightmare on Elm Street, he did not seem to be fully committed to that role, man. Um, like, there's some good scares and stuff within the film, man. But uh, at the end of the film, it actually it has a nice ending. And it's kind of like, it's refreshing. It's different. Uh, but, you know, there are some brutal kills. And, like, there's some good gore. But the good gore was, I think, cut out of the Scream Factor edition. Because they, they got the theatrical cut of the film. Now, the good thing about this one, and I did check the features on this one because I wasn't sure on this one, uh, was that the horror show, which is House 3, by the way, it was only called the horror show here in North America over in Europe. It was called House 3, uh, which is what it originally was supposed to be called. Um, they got a European cut of the film on there as well, which has more gore and stuff on there. So uh, more intensity for like, especially there's a really good opening sequence in this with Lance Henriksen. Uh, and, and it's just incredibly well done. And it is gory and it's, it's brutal. And maybe that's where they got the mean spirit apart. Maybe they watched the first 20 minutes of it and just didn't watch after, what you watch to the end. But... Um, but yeah, it's a good one. Uh, so we get like four films, five really, if you want to uh, talk about the uh, the two editions of House 3. So you're, you're getting with this, you're going to get House, you're going to get the Idol Commentary with Steve Miner, Sean S. Cunningham, and actor William Cat with screenwriter Ethan Wiley. Uh, but there's a new, brand new Ding Dong, You're Dead, The Making of House. Uh, Brian James, thank you, Zombies. <laughs> thank you, I appreciate that. I, I was totally blanking on it. I, I don't know. I don't think um, that's anytime soon. And I don't think that's really going to be going to be a bad thing. So we're going to have like bad. Re We've had bad remakes and bad sequels like, you know, all throughout. Uh, the thing is, the, at the end of the day, you got to remember that uh, as remakes get a lot of press because they're remakes of films that are popular. That being said, there's stuff like, you know, like Hereditary, Midsummer, and like all these other films, like the, the other the Blumhouse original stuff like that, that are coming out. Uh, so, uh so there's still a lot of like really original, like new horror coming out. Yeah. Now, Michelle, the third one is really good. It's very different from the rest of them. Uh, I would like, if you remember the movie Shocker uh, that Wes Craven did, 
with uh, Mitch Pileggi, you know, from X Files, doing the uh, doing the role of like Horace Pinker. Well, House Three, the horror show, is is that? It's like it is a lot like he's not going through electricity, but you know, this is one of those you know, captured serial killers gets killed, comes back from the dead, like haunts the, you know, takes takes a uh, takes out the like. But this is Lance Henriksen, man. If you've only seen the oh Vinny, man, dude. Uh, so. With the first house, you know, there's an hour-long making of documentary on here, a brand new one. There's a vintage making of, like, theatrical gallery. There's a first draft of the screenplay, which I'm actually going to see if I can download and read. And Fred Decker's original 15-page Twilight Zone-inspired story, which was the basis for house. Uh, if the name Fred Decker sounds familiar, that's because Monster Squad <laughs> and, uh, and Night of the Creeps. That's the, that, that Fred Decker. Um, so the first house is really good. It is a... Um, I would consider it like a horror comedy, uh, you know, with a with a bit more horror aspects to it. Now, the second house is is definitely goes more in the, in the quirkier. Uh, oh man, you you got a lot to catch up on the dude. Uh, house two is is really a, di a very different film. It is <laughs> it is definitely more of a uh, a comedic film. Uh, and even in the people that star, we got Ari Gross, Jonathan Stark, Lar Park Lincoln, the gorgeous Lar Park Lincoln from. Friday 13 Part 7 um, in here as well. Uh, and uh, Devin DeVasquez, I can't remember who that is. And of course, the, all these films are done by Harry Manfredini. He, he scores these. Um, commentary with uh, the writer, director, and producer on here as well. Uh, there's going to be, again, there's another. It's getting weirder. And, and House 2 definitely gets weirder. Uh, some people hated House 2 because of the fact that it went in a much more comedic slant. But I think the forgot exactly how much comedy was in the original house um, because I think house 2 was a wonderfully brilliant uh, little comedic gem that a lot of people like overlook and uh, Ari Gross is one of those guys I think it was this guy from Ellen did that Ellen show right hey George I actually said thanks to you at the beginning of this video uh, George actually was on Facebook this morning actually George was the first person I spoke to when I woke up this morning um, welcome George uh, house 2 is is fun cheese but you gotta go in knowing it's going to be fun cheese uh, house 3 the horror show is it is brilliant this is where this is Kane Hodder uh, you know doing the stunt work on this so Kane Hodder does amazing stuff in this one here. We got the uncut European version of this one. This is the edition of this to get, Michelle. So if you're going to get it, grab this edition. Uh, if you don't want to grab like the box set, you can buy these for 15 pounds each on the website and uh, on a BOGO sale. Get if you're not getting another box set, you can get all four of these for 30 pounds. Save yourself 20 pounds, and um, and just all you're missing is a box. I was already getting the the uh, another box set, so that was the reason that I went for this one. He did actually good. He that's true. He did have real worms in his mouth in this one here. So there's the alternate U.S. theatrical cut on here, which you'll see uh, when you. It is tempting, isn't it? See, save yourself twenty pounds too. So when you're getting it, you're like, I may be buying more Arrow, but I'm saving myself twenty pounds. So in actuality, I'm not just buying more I'm uh I'm shopping smart uh and see if you got the first two and screener copies uh and you just want you want to grab the other ones uh yeah 15 pounds you're gonna you can get three and four if you haven't seen four before uh which is uh that one came out on VHS here in North America I don't think it ever got a DVD release <laughs> uh so again so there's idle commentary with this with producer Sean Cunningham uh, we get an interview. Well, there's two things that are poured over from the Scream Factory release, which is an interview with Kane Hodder and an interview with actress Rita Taggart. Uh, but then again, we've got a bunch of new stuff on here, including both cuts of the film. Uh, you're going to get Slider Incorporated, a brand new featurette that talks to K and B and all of them. Robert, uh, Robert Kurtzman, Greg Nic Nicotero, and Howard Berger talks to the three of them. They worked on this one. Man, I would love that. I mean, like, I've been doing this for so long, Vinny, and you know uh, how many companies have video stuff have I pimped out and, and people have ordered stuff <laughs> from watching this stuff here I haven't got a t-shirt or a movie or anything oh yeah Ken Otter's still alive he actually 
Uh, they just recently made a documentary on them, uh, which is really good, by the way. If you get a chance, it's on Shutter, I think. I think it's on Shutter. I've seen it anyway. I watched it. I got to buy it too. Um, there's behind the scenes like footage around like a half an hour or so of behind the scenes footage. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's anything. Uh, behind the deleted scenes, static trailer, and still gallery. And then we come to house for the repossession. In my opinion, this is the weak one. Uh, the Helen back. Thanks, Rich. Uh, this is the weak one when it comes to the uh, to to the house films. I uh, you know it's okay for what it is, but it's uh, it's definitely the weakest of the films. But that being said, I have OC. I got like a little bit OCD, um, so, and I, uh, I I there's no way in hell I'm gonna buy one, and like. I can't. I couldn't just say, "Oh, I like House Three or something like that." I gotta just buy House Three, or I like House One. I'm just gonna buy House. No, <laughs> I do not roll that way. This guy does not roll that way. Uh, uh, oh, all of them are there. Yes, yes, please. Yes, thank you. Um, we get the audio commentary by director and different director. We got Louis Abernathy directing House Four, um, Home Deadly Home, the making of House Four. So. Oh, House 3 didn't have a making of it, had a bunch of other stuff on it, but we get a making of again with this one, um, which should be interesting because Ken Hodder does the, uh, does the stunt work on this one as well. Uh, William Cat from House 1 actually uh, comes, back in, uh, <laughs> comes back in this one. I'm not sure if he's playing the same role. I don't think he is, is he? All oh, the house is a monopoly, <laughs> that's it. <clears throat> I always need to get all the railroads. <clears throat> We're playing, when we play Monopoly, like I, used to, I try and wheel and deal to get all the railroads. I'm trying to remember. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen this one. I saw this one on VHS last time I saw it, Michelle. Uh, I had a, uh, some friends when I was going to college out in, uh, in Steamville, uh, which, is, uh, which is Newfoundland. I was going to college for, uh, for journalism at the time. And uh, they owned a video store. So basically what would happen is uh, that they would get in screeners for movies that they were thinking of getting. And because I was a big horror, like, expectation fan, I, I was in college, and a lot of the stuff that rented, rented out college students. So they would give me the screeners to go and watch them. And uh, then they'd say, so which ones are good? Which ones should we order? Uh, so that was kind of cool. I always get to see the movies first. Um, college was an amazing time for me for many, many reasons. Uh, and that's where I saw House 4, right, actually, the repossession. I don't remember much about it. I remember being disappointed at the time by the film, though I haven't seen it in years, and hopefully uh, a rewatch of it is going to make me, uh, you know, going to, especially with the making of. Like, even if the movie's only okay, if there's a decent, like, documentary behind it, if there's a decent making of, cool audio commentary, that type of thing, uh, then, you know, then I'm on board. Uh, I'd be... The thing, I'll be honest with you, even though there's got these really like long, cool making ups, this is, I kind of like put this like in, kind of like the Critter set. Uh, when Screen Factor put it, the Critter set, you had a making of all the Critters movies on there. So it didn't matter if the Critters movie wasn't your favorite Critters movie or not. You could just go to and put in that disc, go to the making of, watch that type of thing. I, I'm a big features whore. I love that type of stuff. Um, House is the same way. One thing they didn't have was visual essays. And Arrow Video was known. For the visual essays, that's you know that's one of the big things. That's uh, that, that that's a huge deal for Arrow. Their uh, their video essays stand out. It makes them stand apart from uh, from some other companies. I'm not sure if other companies do video essays or not. I'm trying to think of a company that does. I think of the visual essays, but I think there's some that I've kind of like gotten into it a little bit. But Arrow is known for it. Uh, and and for me, they're yeah exactly Michelle. They're my they are my favorite feature. Uh, I'm talking into the set. So there you go. See, now, that being said, Michelle, you can, you, you know, the set's 50 pounds. You can just buy the four films, you know, because there's no book, like, this, you know, this is a re-release, so the book's not going to be there, so you can buy the four films. Unless you've already, if you're buying another set, then, you know, then it's like, then it's like getting it for free. But if you're not, then, then uh, save yourself 20 pounds and just buy the four films. Um, I bought I only I bought the set basically because I I was getting the American Horror Project Volume Two. Uh, I needed that. I'm a big regional horror fan, uh, and I needed something to go with it. Critters Four is your favorite? You have like unique favorites actually. Critters Two is my favorite of all the Critters films. Uh, I always like Critters Two. So yeah, so this is the way to see it. 
this is how I think. This is how I can. This is my attempt to say on the set. I'm. Uh, I should like wear horns when I do these things. Uh, so basically, you're looking at this. You're thinking, I want those house movies. I want those making of. Especially you now, the first house making runs over an hour long. Uh, you know, kind of cool stuff. New, you know, like new interviews, all that type of thing. You're like, but it's fifty pounds. That's a lot of money. But am I getting another set? If you're getting another set, that's fantastic. Then all of a sudden you can say, well, each of these are 25 pounds, which is fan which is a, which is a great price, or I'm getting one of these for free. But if you're not, if you're thinking, oh, like I've already got the ring collection, I've already got the American Horror Project Volume Two type of thing, you know, but but I would like to see the house films. And you said, well, I could buy the box set, or I could save myself 20 pounds. No, uh, I wish it was actually. Female prisoner set isn't there. Um, Tell you what, let me go back, Michelle, and I'll let you know what sets are available. Originally, the house set wasn't my first choice. Um, I wanted it, but they had the uh, Tashio trilogy, you know, by uh, Suzuki. And uh, that sold out. And, uh, like, house was my initial, initial choice, but the Tashio trilogy was something different, and I thought, okay, I'll grab that, because I grabbed the Rings collection, which was amazing, by the way. Uh, so... These are the sets. I'm not sure which ones of these you got, so I'm going to mention them out there. So I'm going to mention some more expensive ones, too, just to put them there. So there's Eric Romer set. That's around 80 pounds. That's, you're getting a little bit over and stuff like that. There's the... Uh, by the way, prepare for me to, like, butcher names. Uh, oh, really? Okay, so there's the American Horror Project Volume 2. I mentioned that one to you before. What I recommend over that, though, I, I'm, I'm going to be... Maybe I'll be in, like, the, the minority here. But Blood Hunger, the films of Jose Larez. If you're a fan of Jose Larez, like say Mondo Macabre put out a movie called Symptoms with Angela Pleasance uh, about a year or two back. Uh, love that film. Uh, that's director Jose Larez. Uh, three films on that one are, uh, are kind of this, kind of this more of this Hitchcockian style one called Whirlpool. Uh, there is a the vampire one, uh, Vampire Vampires. Uh, I'm sure you've seen it. And there is, I think, The Coming of Sin is the third one, which has a very different title, which I will not say on the channel, but it has a very, very different title. Jose Larraz is uh, actually it's a pretty good set. I can actually even show it to you. I got it uh, just, uh, just downstairs there. Next up is Eight Hours Don't Make a Day, which is a uh, Fassbender uh, TV uh, a miniseries that was done. There's the house set. There is the, if you want to get something, you want to be all artsy and smart. You can get the uh, the documentarist one, the Jean-Luc Godard and Jean-Pierre Gorin five film, 1968 to 1971 dual format set there for that's $50. There is the Ring Collection, which I also have, and that is a really good one too. Uh, I do, if you don't have those, I do recommend. It's got Ring 1, Ring 2, Ring 0, and even has Rizan on it, uh, which is like a super super cool there's like a really good documentary on the ring films and the, the and the ring legacy itself on uh, ring zero there's an excellent visual essay by jasper sharp going through completely through the genre of j-horror and talking about like their it's uh it, the start the origins of j-horror and going all the way through till like kind of like it's uh it's drop off point um so that's actually a really good one and it is a gorgeous looking set as uh as well you guys are on, on, on death wish over there uh, De Niro, De Palma, Early Years, uh, Outlaw Gangster VIP I actually like. Exactly, that's the thing. And once these are gone, the prices go up insanely. Sasha Gotri, if you're into Sasha, Gotri is a good one as well. And of course, if you're a Woody Allen fan, if you're, that's, you know, uh, if you like Woody Allen's films, I know Vinny is a Woody Allen, well, not a fan of Woody Allen, there's not a fan of Woody Allen. Vinny is a fan of Woody Allen's films. Um, there's three sets of Woody, for Woody Allen there from 1971 to 1978, from 1979 to 1985, and from 1986 to 1991. One thing to know about Woody Allen is he does not allow special features to go on any of his films. Uh, so there is, however, a 100-page book for each of the sets with essays talking about the films because Woody Allen can't stop that. Uh, they do have like uh, they're in like more slimline cases as opposed to kind of like the uh, the thicker ones here. But your stuff like the arrow sets and stuff like that, like a lot of the like the ring set, for instance, those will have the bigger cases. 
Uh, and of course, there's the Hellraiser box set, uh, which is 35 pounds. And uh, if you're a fan of like stuff like Necromantic, uh, <laughs> I feel exactly the same way as you did. Uh, my better half like won't even like go into the films, but I'm a, I, I do like the, I, I cannot lie about the fact that I, that I do like the films. Um, so some anyway, I don't like all. Uh, the Dare Totus King, which is uh, from the guy that did the Necromantic film. So if Necromantic is your bag, then, uh, then that... So you could actually grab yourself the house set, for instance, and get the uh, Hellraiser set for free. Now, this is the redone Hellraiser set, so it's not going to... So I'm going to go into it for you because... So the book won't be there, and it'll be like the... Uh, I'm going to see if you can see it there. Hopefully you can. So what I like about this, and I'm kind of peeved because I actually like this. I love my Scarlet box set, and I love the extras and the book and all that stuff. But I utterly adore these cases. One of these days when I got some extra money on me, I'm not going to lie, uh, I'm going to buy this. Uh, <laughs> I got the, I've got the set, like with this, but they got like the cardboard cases and stuff. But these with the regular cases, with the kind of the blue, the red, and the blue, and the green, they look gorgeous. Uh, yeah, see, I got the original Scarlet set. You got the new set, Scarlet? See, I like this. It's, it looks, I love the look of the art on the on these sets. Um, I'm a big Hellraiser fan, though. Um, I'm not always a fan of a lot of, I like Clyde Barker's, like, writing, but you got both sets. Nice. See, that's, that's what I, that's me. Cold blue. That, that's me. That's that's what I'll do. Uh, but it's a gorgeous looking set. Now, the thing you're missing out on really is the book. I think that's the only thing. I'll see if the, I guess on the bonus disc because there's a bonus disc in the, uh, in the in the set as well. But if you want the films, because you're gonna get the films and you're gonna get the you know, uh, with Hellraiser three, for instance, you're gonna get the alternate version. You're gonna get the 93 and 97 minute version of the film as well. Uh, all the making ofs of the Hellraisers are on here. Um, so really only missing out on this, uh, on this like bonus disc, which I'll be honest that you be good without the bonus disc, you'd be fine. Um, so there you go. I'm actually probably going to going very soon right now because I, uh, it's getting later and I gotta, I've got to go to, uh, into town tomorrow. So I'm going to be going to bed earlier tonight. I already got the bonus disc. Do you have like the... Let me guess. You got like the? Did you get like the uh, the screen discs of these? But there you go, Michelle. Hopefully, I've helped you a bit or tempted you a bit with some of this stuff. <laughs> You're a bad man. <clears throat> oh my god, my voice isn't gonna. I'm gonna have a, a raspy enough voice to do that. I gotta bring all this stuff downstairs. Anyway. Thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. Um, I was lucky enough to get pretty much everything that I wanted for this sale. Um, next sale time, I'm definitely going to be looking at, depends on what box I throw out, but I really want to grab more of the Jowl stuff um, the next time around. <laughs> yeah, Vinny, it worked. <laughs> so all you guys there, I mean, like, thank you so much for coming in. Nice to actually have you in here, Michelle. Come back. You're now officially part of the movie club. One of us. Uh, thanks for joining. And George, if you're still there, thank you for talking to me today, man. I really appreciate that. You. Uh, so you guys can curse me later on when you're, uh, when you're buying this stuff. But as always, like, share, subscribe. Uh, share this on Twitter if I do. Uh, oh, I cannot do it the Criterion sale. Uh, that's that's the one I, that that's the one that I uh, that I <laughs> that I can't do this time. I will live vicariously through you though, Benny. And I will see you next time here in the movie club. I'm Aaron. You guys are the movie club. You guys are awesome. And when this rocks, it rocks because of you. I uh, I, I just sit here. Have a great evening. <laughs>